what is going on you guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be learning about the mvvm or model view view model pattern with swift ui so heavily requested so here it finally is here's the app we're going to be putting together it's a to-do list and by default we don't have any to-do list items and we go ahead and hit refresh what we're actually doing is we're updating our view model and our view is automatically updating, which is that you know, reactive MVVM pattern. So we'll take a look at how to build this. I've also got the observable object developer documentation page opened up here, which is this really cool thing in Swift UI that we're gonna use to achieve this. Um, basically, it's a way where kind of what you saw here where you can observe uh, different objects and their properties and you know get MVVM working very very simply and seamlessly so that said make sure you smash that like button as always for the YouTube algorithm smash it for daily Swift uploads hit subscribe while you're at it if you're a returning viewer let me stop blabbering on get extra ready get excited let's dig into some Swift UI quick pause before we get into the video if you haven't seen it already I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, we're gonna begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template here and let's go ahead and call this Swift UI MVVM. Make sure your language is Swift, of course, and most importantly, your interface is Swift UI. Go ahead and continue. And let's go ahead and save this to our desktop. Looks like I've got a previous folder named that. So let's just replace it. And all right, cool. So let's expand this Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. We don't need that right panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And we already have a simulator uh, booted up here. So let me just select that from our simulator list. I believe it was the 11 Pro Max. So awesome, let's talk about some MVVM. So for those of you not familiar, MVVM is the notion of introducing this view model object, which serves as an intermediate between your view and your model, and it holds the data, state, and information to present your view. Uh, and the idea is what is here, when your view model changes, your view should automatically update. And Swift UI is super powerful in the uh, sense that it lets us do that almost for free without a lot of effort. So as you saw in the beginning uh, of this video, we're gonna create a simple to-do list uh, list app. And when we hit a button, we're gonna populate um, some items in there uh, in our to-do list. So the first thing we need to do is create a to-do list item uh, model. And it's gonna be identifiable so we can actually use it in a loop. So we're gonna add a ID property, which is required by identifiable and just assign it to your UUID, which is a unique string. And then in here, we're also going to have an action, which will be a string. Uh, and actually, before we start continuing more so with this, let me go ahead and hit resume here to get our preview loading. Uh, and that'll make our lives a lot easier as we build this. Looking good. So what do we want to show in our view? So we're going to want to first add a navigation view. And in here, we're going to have a V stack. Whoops, a V stack. And we're going to create a list over uh, to-do list items. And we're going to say item in. Now we need to create that items, of course. So here we're going to say items is going to be uh, an array of to-do list item, just like that. And I'm actually just going to assign it to a single entry here instead of an initializer for, so we can actually see some dummy data. And let's just add an action of get milk in here. And uh, in here, we're going to go ahead and say for each of these items, we're just going to show the item dot action. Let's go ahead and give this a navigation title, make it look a little nicer. We'll go ahead and call it to do list. And on the right here, if we go ahead and hit try again. Hopefully we don't have any errors here. Let's give it a second. Let's see if we broke anything. Looks like we broke something. Let's see what we got wrong. 
Let's take a look at our errors here. Something's not quite correct. Let's try that one more time. Let's try again. All right, there we go. Sometimes the previews are uh, a little wonky here, so you got to try it a few times. But there's our get milk. There is our uh, title as well. So pretty simple. Now, of course, what we want to do is, let's say we were actually fetching this to-do list uh, item list from some API. Whenever the list of items changes, we want, what we want to go ahead and do is we want our view to automatically uh, update. So instead of actually fetching from an API and making this video unnecessarily long, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add a button here called refresh. And when we click on it, we're just going to go ahead and add more items. So here, uh, I'm going to say navigation, spell that correctly. And I believe there's items and we want a trailing item, which is going to be a button uh, with a action and a label. We'll just go with the, this one right here. And the action is going to be a closure. And the label is of course a text. And we're just going to go ahead and call it refresh. And now we have this nice looking button up here and we tap it. We want to do something in here. So what is that something? So here is where we introduce our uh, model view view model piece, right? So right now we just have directly in our uh, view, this array of items. So this kind of works. It's not really the cleanest design. So let's clean this up a little bit. So what we want to do is introduce observable object. So go ahead and create a class. And we're going to call this uh, to do to do list. Let's just call it to do list. And it needs to subclass observable object. And it needs to be a class and not a struct. Very important. And in here, we're going to move items. Uh, we'll just keep it with that default one. We're going to move that to be in here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is we are going to mark this property at published. And what this allows us to do, that what this allows the view here to do actually, is whenever we publish a change to this property in our observable object, the view can redraw itself. It can reconstruct itself. But we need to do uh, two more changes to get this working. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to introduce a var view model on here. And this view model is going to be of type to-do list. Right. And uh, extremely important, you need to mark this observed object. And actually, if you take a look at uh, the documentation string down here, uh, a property wrapper type that subscribes to an observable object and invalidates a view uh, whenever the observable object changes, which is just a fancy way of saying whenever something changes in here, the view is going to tear down and redraw itself. So fairly straightforward. So let's go ahead and create one of these to-do list items. Let me actually just go ahead and start this off as empty. And this is going to be a to-do list. And it takes in, I guess, nothing right now because we don't have a constructor on it, which we'll add in a second. But here you can see that it's complaining about items because we need to change this to be view model dot items. Let me actually also close this left panel since we don't need it. And let's go ahead and hit, uh, hit resume here, make sure everything is still building and showing up. Now we shouldn't see anything in our list now because we don't have anything, but it should be building. Now when we tap on that uh, button up there, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and update the items on our view model here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say self.viewmodel.items. And let's just go ahead and stick like three items in here, which is going to be a to-do list item with a given action. So we're going to say go running. Let me just copy and paste that. Get milk. Uh, do work. Let's see. Upload video and teach Swift UI. So let's go ahead and hit run, or I guess it's already uh, resumed here. So let's just go ahead and hit command R to build and run into our simulator rather, which we should have open here already, like so. Looks like we're in dark mode, which is cool. Get to see a different view. And what do you guys expect to happen when we hit this button? Well, we're updating the model here, but we're not explicitly saying redraw or anything. But what you'll notice is when we hit it, 
the entire view just pops up like that, which is the whole concept of uh, observable object. And this is why this is so powerful. Uh, and you know, if you were fetching from an API, what you could do is you can dispatch a fetch on like some type of fetch object. And once, as soon as you update anything in this to-do list item that's marked published, a published event gets fired off. And because this is an observed object, this view knows that it's using it to draw itself and it's gonna draw itself again. Now, keep in mind, if you remove this observed object and hit run, you'll notice actually that nothing actually fails in compiling. It'll still run, but when you tap on this, the view doesn't actually change. Now, that's not to say that we're not updating the, the view model here, where we are updating that published property, but we need to tell SwiftUI uh, basically, hey, we're using this view model thing here of type to-do list, listen to anything in here uh, for changes that's marked published. And this quickly becomes a very, very powerful concept that scales with uh, large applications uh, and really helps you separate out your concerns, right? So here we have uh, a model for each of the to-do list items. Here we have a view model, which renders a list of these to-do list items. And we, again, have subclassed observable object the array of to-do list items is published, so we can publish to it. And then our view here, which we just left as content view, has one view model, which wraps the data that we need to render our view, and it's an observed object. So whenever it changes, whether it changes within this view or via an API call or some other means, the, our view can seamlessly go ahead and redraw itself. So that's basically it. That's uh, as simple as it gets. So SwiftUI is super powerful for doing this. Hope that all made sense for you guys. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below. If you haven't destroyed the like button, make sure to do that as always. Helps out with the video and engagement and all that good stuff, as all of you I'm sure know. Hit subscribe while you're at it for daily Swift uploads. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.